We are with J.R. Reed and Andrew here. They are going to be talking about how they went from corporate America to doing over six figures a month and 20 plus rentals. I am super excited to chat with them today. And so let's get started here. We got our microphone set up. Awesome. I want to, what I want to hear, know about before, um, before corporate and, and doing all this is how do, how do y'all know, how do y'all know each other? I know business, business partners are something that you really have to be careful with because it, it you know, same thing with, with life partners, with, with partners. It just, it really matters a lot. How do y'all get to know each other? And I appreciate y'all coming on. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Man. Thanks for having us, man. We appreciate it. Here, you want to put that to you? You can talk. Sure. Do you, you want to tell the, the, the story of how we met? Yeah. I mean, we, we actually met in undergrad. We both went to uh, U of H and did the Wolf Center for Entrepreneurship program there and uh, got to know each other through that program and actually did a, uh, was on a, a project, a team together at a Burger Fest. And so we were on a team to that and kind of our first experience doing business, if you will, opening a, a burger stand on campus. Really? Yeah. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. Incredible. What, what, was it U of H or? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we okay. went, so it was an entrepreneurship program at U of H. Um, Andrew and I just kind of meshed well, I, I feel like, and, and uh, he really actually stepped up and, and helped me out with, because I was supposed to be kind of heading that project and uh, my team kind of just fell off a little bit. <laughs> so Andrew saw, he wasn't even on my team. He saw that I was struggling a little bit with my team and he was like, hey, do you need help? <laughs> and I was like, it'd be great if somebody did help me. So uh, he stepped up and yeah, we ended up, I think we ended up selling the most burgers. I've we ever did, yeah. 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 So it was good. Really? That's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. Okay. So y'all had some, y'all feel like y'all had some good connections in, uh, in college here at U of H? For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Awesome. What, um, and what, you know, leading, I know y'all were in, in corporate, you know, how, how in the heck did y'all go from cooking, bar cooking, <laughs> burgers, <laughs> cooking together yeah. in college and all of a sudden you're. I know y'all, when, when we met a long time ago, I know we met with, um, at a meetup, I think it was Ray Sasser and yeah, Charles yeah, Wynn, yeah. and we were, at, we were at a bar, and you know, you're just doing a couple, just doing a deal here, yeah, there, working yeah, I your think job. You and I, like, I think we all started really the same time in real estate. Yeah, not, not too far apart. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, that's how, I think we, we met at the, the meetup. Um, that meetup was a great meetup, too. We, yeah, we met a really lot of good was. people through there. Um, a lot of people who really helped us out along the way. So we, Ricardo Rosalio, so we met him there. Ray Sasser, we met him there. A um, bunch of other people. Sway, we ended up meeting mm -hmm. Sway there. Mm -hmm. um, Kirk and, and Lee, we met them there too. It was a good meetup. Yeah, definitely a little small, close, that, that yeah. little place in the... Uh... Black Labrador. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good place. I, I don't know if that... I think that place might have shut down. I think it did. Did it? Yeah. It, it was didn't a, make it through COVID? Yeah, I oh, think COVID no. erected. It was like a hole in the wall that was pretty good. Yeah. Wow. It was a cool place. Heck yeah. So, um, yeah, so we met in college and, and um, we became friends in college. And then after that, um, we both did our thing in the corporate world. So I went and actually sold copiers after college for my first job. Um, I learned a lot of good sales skills there. And then Andrew, he took kind of a different path than what I did. Yeah, I was always on like the operations side of stuff. So I went and worked at a, uh, a kind of a corporate turnaround right after college, um, wood waste recycling. So like organic waste recycling, um, grew that business and then left that, went and did my uh, MBA and then went into uh, oil and gas doing operations for a company and then ultimately finance with them. Okay, I love it. Yep. Is that how you... in? Uh, I know we, we had a lot of great introductions from you. Is that how you met? What, did you meet Pete in, Pete in college or you met? Uh, so actually Matt, uh, you're Matt, talking about Matt, that's what it was. one of our, one of our uh, shout out to uh, Longleaf Lending. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah, one of our, one of my buddies um, who's a partner in that company, he started out um, doing his own thing and then ultimately they grew that. Um, but Matt and I were colleagues at, uh, or, or classmates at Rice together. Oh, okay, I see. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Good. Good guy, good guy. Super good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Plays a big part in our in our real estate story for sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, what 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 were those things that that kind of led you from selling co copiers and then all all of a sudden I see you on you know y'all are on TV now and yeah. Um, I guess you what kind of what kind of changed when you or what caused you to start going to these meetups and to start. Um, 
to start that, that direction from yeah from, from going to from I'm sure at Rice they probably didn't teach you to go out and buy a bunch of properties. So. Did not know. <laughs> <laughs> so he and I at one point had decided that we were going to invest um, in real estate together. So we were going to go buy rentals. Um, we decided that at one point I was like, yeah, let's just do this. Let's go buy rentals. And he's like, yeah, let's buy rentals. And so we were like talking to agents, like trying to find deals through agents and the MLS. And what we ended up finding was it was really tough to find good deals through the MLS. And um, right. then we started going to real estate meetups and then we heard about wholesaling and we were like, wait a second, what is this wholesaling thing that we're hearing about? And yeah, it just kind of evolved from there. Um, once we, we found out about that, I got really upset with uh, a company I was working with at the time and uh, ended up leaving there and telling him, hey man, I think I'm gonna wholesale full time and maybe I can find us some good houses. We hadn't bought a house at this point yet together, a rental property. And he's like, yeah, yeah, why, why don't you, because we put some money together to go buy houses. He's like, why don't you use the money that we put together as marketing dollars okay, and then just pay it back or whatever and then you can just find us houses too. And I was like, okay, sounds good. And so next thing you know, I mean, fast forward a couple <laughs> years and now we're both out of our jobs and uh, I guess we're unemployable now. Yeah, completely <laughs> unemployable. Holy cow, yeah. that's a that's a big paradigm shift, especially from no no deals or no properties. For sure. How, I'm, I'm really curious, everybody has a different story. How long of a time frame were you like, from when you started searching for deals and then say, I know you, at some point you allocated some money to it as well, Yeah. but how long was it until you like got your teeth and sunk your teeth in that, that, that deal? Um, how did we first, we first started doing, we, man, we, we actually first started doing marketing through Facebook. And so that was like our first marketing channel. And, um, a guy named Chris Chico, I don't know if you know yeah. who he is. He, he taught, or we, we bought his course, um, started running ads on Facebook. God, I wish I would have had those kind of metrics that we had in, like back then. Now, um, I was getting leads for $10 a lead, $10 a lead, $10 yeah. a lead. And Where I, do I sign up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> $10 a lead. I didn't know what I had. Um, we were spending like 70 bucks a day, so getting like seven leads a day. S in seven inbound. inbound leads are like, hey, inbound. JR and Andrew, can you? That's Had really good. Like, no it, Especially idea. for, you know, cold calling, that's a little bit of a different story too. But Yeah, but these are um, inbound leads. Wow, that's good. So, um, but somehow I still messed it up to where we didn't buy that many houses because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but we ended up buying our first house from doing that, I guess, like a month into running those. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, so a, we, a month in. Yeah, a month in. Uh, okay. we, we ended up, oh no, I guess we need to kind of back up. We're, we're skipping some steps here. Yeah, I mean, our first, we were both working full time still. And on the weekends, when we figured out what wholesaling was and, and, and how to go search for a deal, we just started pulling the foreclosure list. And uh, we would split that up. And like Saturday and Sunday, our goal was to go knock on 100 doors. Uh, between the two of us um, and that's actually how we got like our first wholesale deal got someone to commit to put it under property and we had no idea what we were doing we said all the wrong stuff to all the wrong things but uh, somehow ended up convincing somebody to to uh, sell their property to us we actually ended up helping the lady a lot she had to move out of state and a lot of other things uh, but we wholesaled that property and I think we made what should we make like two thousand dollars? Two thousand dollars on our first wholesale deal. So, hey. Yeah, two thousand dollars on our first wholesale deal. We thought we were cooking then, so we did. Heck yeah! So yeah, I guess I skipped that part of the story because that was a. I guess there were some bad memories and good memories that went along with that too. <laughs> okay. Fun weekends. Yeah, yeah. fun weekends. Um, yeah, so yeah, we we got our first couple deals from just knocking on doors for pre foreclosures, and we did it all wrong too. Yeah. Like. Totally incorrect. Like we would show up to people's house and be like, I know you're going through foreclosure. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> imagine the reception you get, like you're in the worst part of your life. You're losing your house and you got two white guys knocking on your door like, hey, uh, so I hear you're about to lose your house. Do you want to sell it to us? Do not recommend it. I see your yeah. dirty laundry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. No. But I'll tell you what, though, that really says something about... Um, because if you 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 get team members on, you mm -hmm. want to see who's serious or not. Yeah. Who will go out there and knock on the door? That's true. Like, because mo most people won't most people won't do it. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was fun. It kind of was proof of concept for us, right? I mean, so then we were kind of okay. This actually can be done. This can work. And that's when we started 
digging deeper, going to more meetups sure. and signed up for the Chris Chico and, and learned about marketing and marketing allocation. And JR, to his credit, he, he figured out Facebook real early on yeah. um, and started running those ads and everything. Didn't know what I had. That's awesome. Didn't know what I had. That's awesome. I'm sure, and I'm sure as y'all have gone on, y'all kind of had to change and adapt strategies, like, you know, if Facebook is still working today or not, or, right. you know, and everything like that. But that's awesome. Um, I sure. like it. And so that's a two, $2,000 2, deal. Yep. And then all of a sudden at the same time, we're now we're, we're acquiring these rentals. You're, you're over 20 rentals yep. or 20 plus. Mm -hmm. um, is that like simultaneously? And I'm sure there's kind of, you know, some, you've learned a lot, learned about the financing a little bit as well. And kind of, you know, simultaneously, is it simultaneously? Or do you think there's a point where someone, we'll talk about like maybe, what do you think is the best way maybe for an investor who's wholesaling to buy a rental property? I yeah. Think, I think that's a good question coming up later. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So we, we did this all simultaneously. So we were buying rental properties. It actually our first like deal that we got through um, Facebook. That's how we found our first rental property. It was mm -hmm. our first deal that we got through Facebook. So you y'all really didn't get in like it's from what it sounds like y'all got in this to buy, to buy rentals from the beginning. For sure. You were like, Hey, we want the, we want to be, wealthy rental property owners. We don't want to be like, yeah, let me wholesale forever. So yeah. That's not like what no. I started. Yeah, we were always focused on trying to build or figuring out how we could build a portfolio. And then we, we as we learned and we saw wholesaling could be a tool to doing that. Okay. Exactly. I love it. Good way to buy deals deeper. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I'm sure that probably works into the, works into the financing as well as we can dive in about, you know, do you have to wholesale to, you know, two brothers rental properties as well? But it sounds like you'll have first pick, you know, first pick of, of everything, huh? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I think um, now it's like a balance of, well, how much money can we make on this property? And then like, should we keep it and does it fit our portfolio? And so that's really the balance there is, well, are we going to make 50 grand on this and, and sell it to somebody else? Or are we going to keep it and, and kind of delay that? gratification yeah yeah because yeah. you're not I mean I know what the rental properties are like um, I don't have 20 but I can tell you these things are not you know if you have a couple rental properties you know you're not making you're not sitting on a boat with uh, <laughs> with, with tons of no. with tons of passive no. income no. No. you're not ready to I can guarantee you you know you're not, you're not ready to retire off you know, five to 10 rentals no. with 20. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that that probably pays some marketing bills, you know, stuff, stuff like that. Uh, um. <laughs> as you're building the portfolio, I mean, you, there's some money there, but it's not a lot. Yeah. It really like incremental is what you yeah, said. For sure. Cause it, cause we're, we're buying so many, or not so many, but we're buying them and, and rehabbing so much. There's always some kind of cost that go into to all yeah. that. Yeah, you're, you're continually feeding the animal, right? So, I mean, it does take scale to kind of absorb some of the hits and there's a lot that goes into rentals. I mean, as you probably know, it's not passive income. It's actually very active income. You've got to manage people, personalities, you know, uh, assets, things are need maintenance, things are breaking, all that sort of stuff. So growing a rental portfolio is great for long term, but in the immediate term, that cash flow um, is either feeding new deals or new acquisitions or um, going back to be recycled on projects that you just uh, need to do work on and maintenance on. And for that sure. Sort of thing. I can compl I completely see where y'all coming well, where y'all are coming from because if you know if you you're going out there and you're wanting you know to retire off some rentals and then or buying you know expensive cars along the way you know you're not you're not going to be able to keep growing and keep that like keep that portfolio from what for sure from what i see I pro and it probably depends too on how y'all are you know when you get into this like how y'all are financing most of these yeah um i know that you know from a typical investor they have a lot of money stuck in the deal mm -hmm. um you would think in general you would think that with you know creating the wholesaling company that hopefully we can be as little money out of pocket and some of these sure. rentals as possible by For acquiring sure. at that discount. But I know how the world works and how this business works is sometimes appraisals come in low. Yeah, I'm sure y'all have had great. I'm sure y'all. <laughs> and I know I've seen on your story. I've seen people been breaking into your properties. Looks yeah. like y'all yeah. are buying some rough stuff. Yeah. Um, I want to hear like a best case scenario, maybe in a worst case scenario on a rent on a on a rental. While we're on this whole like rental thing, we can go back to the team. You know, our, our first one, our first rental that we bought. I mean, to Jared's credit, we we got a good property, we got a good deal, 
um, through our marketing, but we did everything wrong from a, from a rental standpoint. I mean, it was, it's down in Texas city. So it was a far drive for us, not right in the backyard. So for kind sure. of, I mean, Houston's a big Metroplex. Yeah. So it's, I mean, you can get there, but for a lot of people in different areas of the country, I mean, that's a different city. It's um, a mall. Like, it is. And, and we, we, it's an older house, uh, and we bought it and said, oh, we're gonna make it look nice. And so we, yeah. we put in new flooring and painted it, made it look really nice and didn't pay any attention to all the underlying things, the mechanicals, the, the electrical, the roof or anything like that. AC. So <laughs> we still own that property. Uh, I mean, the, the value on it, I mean, that's the thing about rentals. I mean, the appreciation on it, the equity on it has grown, but you know, since we've owned it, we've gone back and replaced the AC, we've replaced the roof, we've done a lot of plumbing work and that sort of thing, which is, tremendously harder to do when there's tenants inside of it. It's, it's much better. Yeah, and that was one of the biggest, front. yeah, that's one of the biggest lessons we learned is now on new acquisitions and everything, as we go in and look at the properties, we're buying these with the mindset of a 30 year asset. And so we're going to take care of all those major mechanicals up front. So more often than not, we're replacing all the plumbing in a house. Um, you know, we're putting new roofs on, we're putting new HVACs in, um, that way we don't have to deal with tenant service calls and, and we get 30 year financing on them. So we want those assets to last for 30 years. For sure. Wow. So y'all are planning on keeping them for, for, for a while. As long as we can. Yeah. yeah. As long as it makes economic <laughs> okay. sense. As long as it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I love it. I, I completely agree that while you're, while you're in there up front, you might as well. The only downside is it's, you know, that additional expense i guess up front for sure in the long term and how you maneuver that financing as well and stuff like that too for, for sure and so i guess if you have your acquisitions guy um if you have your acquisitions guy get the property you know really you have to consider hey we got to get the pay our acquisitions guy something yep or our house or for or pay back some of our marketing dollars to the mart what do you call it uh, machine the you know, machine they, yeah you gotta sure. the beast so we gotta our, ideally on each one of these are you chunking off some money to the mark basically oh, yeah. the marketing team like hey here's our advertising cost acquisition guide you know pay and then we're going to try to bring in a loan at one of these non-qm loans i'm assuming or yeah so so i'll, I'll explain some of it and then you can kind of talk about the financing on the back end so i'll, yeah. I'll explain the front end so um, when we buy a house from like let's say one of our acquisition guys goes out and buys us a house or rental property um we will buy that rental property, we'll have another LLC buy that rental property from the wholesaling company. Okay. So um, we actually assign that to another LLC. But so there's dollars that come from the buying LLC to the actual wholesaling company because we've got to be able to feed the beast, like yeah. you said, right? Pay marketing dollars. We have to pay the commissions of all of our people because everybody has to eat off of that. Yeah. So um, that's where that kind of front end of that what it costs to do that sells the holding company for sure mm -hmm. and then he goes rehabs it uh, manages the project and then we refinance on the back end nice. you want to explain all how that works yeah i mean to jr's point i mean that is that's also kind of division of labor here as well jr works very much on the front end of our business kind of on our active business which is wholesaling marketing running those teams and then i really kick into gear once he identifies a good opportunity for us um, he'll assign that to a separate LLC, and then that's where I go get the financing, the private money, do the rehab, manage the operations and the financing. Sure. Um, so once we assign that over to to a, a hold company, um, you know we have good partners. We we use hard money, we use private money, but we'll go um, get the acquisition money as well as the rehab money on that property, um, complete the value add, get it tenant stabilized. Um, and then now we're at a point to where we're just doing non-QM loans. Um, that was one of the kind of the, the values that we had of working together early is we were slowly growing the portfolio and, and focused on marketing and finding deals and focused on deals um, while I was still in corporate America. So JR left his job about a year, a year and a half before I did. Um, and so I, he was able to find good deals and I was able to go finance those with traditional financing. Lower interest rate. Because I still had W-2. Um, you know, my DTI was still good. And so we kind of exhausted that, um, all those options, got my DTI way out of whack to where I could no longer refinance properties. <laughs> and uh, and uh, finally, um, that was 
we got to a point where I was able to step away. And so now, um, as we're cycling through projects and properties, we're just tenant stabilizing and basically getting um, non-QMs, which as you probably know, is just a, um, it's a loan based on the asset, the value of the asset and the cash flow of the asset. For sure. I like it. So do you have like a best case scenario? I know your worst case is, it sounds like you had to infuse a bunch of rehab money to that property in Texas City, we management did. mistake. And it sounds like it was just, ideally, all that money is out of pocket. Like if you wait till later too, it's all out yep. of pocket. It's not like you have some rehab reserve to dip into, to really dip into later. Sure. Um, now are y'all, are y'all able to do some of these? I'm sure it just depends. And you, you know, everybody has to get paid too, like your team. Are you able to do some of these deals where acquisitions team gets the deal yeah. through all their, all their efforts with JR um, and his team. Um, and then you bring it in, you're rehabbing it, you're placing the tenant in it, you're getting the appraisal, you're getting the non-QM loan, and you're able to finance that at say 75%. Is, yeah. What I've seen 75% is the norm, and you're able to get all your money back out, Have uh, or is that just kind of, sometimes it's a little bit of money stuck in the deal, maybe, or I mean, what does the, that part the, look like? The goal is always to put as little money in it as possible, right? Yeah. And use as little of our own money as possible. Um, we've been really blessed to have some really good private lenders. Like we were talking about Matt earlier from yeah. from uh, Longleaf Lending. Early on, kind of on early on in our journey, we were really lucky to have him because he wanted to start a lending company, and he was a good contact of Andrews from Rice. And so, because he wanted to start as a, a lender back then, he basically was our private lender from the beginning. So we didn't have to. We only had to do one hard money where we went through like capital concepts or one of these hard money lenders um, and learned that it was way better to use private lending to do these deals rather than to have to go through the, the hard money and have so much down on the deal, have so much out of pocket and that kind sure. of thing. And we were able to do a lot of 100% financing type of situations. So it was, it was a big blessing for us to be able to have that. Um, but now, um, yeah, it's really we want to put as little money as out of pocket as possible. Yep. But sometimes you do go over and your rehab budget runs over what you thought it was going to run over. Or like right now we're doing a, um, a garage apartment build out in one of our houses. Um, we, we didn't budget all the way for that. So we're going to be out of money when it comes to refinancing. Okay. Out of pocket, I mean. Yeah, I mean costs are... Our granite, even just our, our granite costs have gone up, just as an example. But yeah, a lot of costs are going up for the rehab right now, and for sure, <clears throat> sometimes things comes up, come up, just like that one in Texas City. Yes, I mean a lot of times, like I said, we'll go in to make the house new um, as best as we can. But you know, it's not uncommon to run across a property where, you know, we we buy these houses, we walk through them, but we're not doing full inspections and stuff. But you know, there's a couple times where we've got a collapsed sewer line that we hadn't planned for or something Ooh. like that, that you got to dig that out and replace it. And it's just, uh, it's just part of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or they move in, everything looks great. Everything's going well. And then two <laughs> months later, the, the sewer line collapses after the tenant <laughs> yeah. moves in. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. But there's, there's always those headaches, headaches, whether it's on the, the rehab side or the tenant management side or the refinance, like you said, a low appraisal or something like that. But we do, we try to, we have good partners. We try to be as little cash out of pocket as possible. Um, but we're also not afraid to put, put some skin in the game. For sure. Okay. I like it. Well, that's awesome. And tell me about uh, your fun with your with your team now. Go yeah. on, go. I know you're on the on the news now as well. On see you on at five, five o'clock news. It seems it seems like <laughs> yeah. So uh, man, we've been really blessed with building a team. Um, that's really I think what's taken our business off or made it take off was our team. Um, we've been able to put some really good people in place that really helped us grow the business. So our acquisition side, we have some really great rock stars on that side. Um, now we've moved people over from acquisitions over to um, dispositions. They're doing an amazing job there. And we've got a, an amazing transaction coordinator that has, I mean, all of them together has really w been the rocket fuel for us growing. Um, so any kind of growth that we've had over the last years, I really have to give them the credit for it. It's just, they came in and, and really taken the bull by the horns and helped us grow the business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, our team, I mean, your team, your people, um, it's, it's number one by far. Yeah. I mean, it starts, you know, we've got a good partnership. We've got a good friendship originally and everything. And that was a good solid foundation for us to build on. And so, 
um, I like to think or I believe that anybody that comes into our company kind of sees that genesis and they're excited to be a part of that and we pour a lot into our team um, you know to help them they all want to be anyone that comes to be a part of our organization wants to be involved in real estate and we want to show them and teach them how they can do that for sure I love it yeah you really have to like who you're like who you're working with because I'm sure like you know like us I'm sure you're at the office sometimes past 5 p.m. or yeah. you know working or working on the weekend sometimes, some, sometimes <laughs> working on the weekend every day sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you're always thinking about it you're never you're never not <laughs> Yeah, I know you're. I know. Uh, I know both of y'all are hard workers, but I remember sometimes where you were like doing some. I think when I came even when I came over to your place that one time and I met like I think I met Ethan for the first time. Yeah. And you were like, oh, I just finished up doing some tra- some training or um, training my team members on the computer with the call sure. or something. Yeah. Um, you have any um, any couple couple words of wisdom maybe for for someone out there that is looking to. Um, join a team like y'all's join an acquisition team or maybe um any like an or a couple acquisitions nuggets to getting a deal in 2020 um yeah on the, kind of on the acquisition side maybe with the sales part i know you've done that steve that um i know you did steve Tr- steve trang's sales yeah, training man. as well that looks really that looks really beneficial for sure um so i'll, I'll break your your questions down to, to two different questions so um We'll start with the first thing. If you're like looking to get into wholesaling or real estate or any of the real estate investing, if you have the ability to go work for somebody, I highly recommend you go work for somebody that's doing it well. Um, also, I would work for a company that is excited about you being excited about getting doing your own real estate stuff. Um, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people who have teams and stuff, and um, they they don't like the idea always that their employees might want to go do their stuff on their own. We kind of take a different approach to that. We want people who tell us that they want to do their own real estate investing, who want to do their own, have their own real estate investing dreams, if you will. And we look at it as if you can have 18 months with that person and of them working with us and we teach them everything that we know. So they get lots of value out of that and we get value in turn from them working with us. I think that's a, a really solid relationship. Heck yeah, and you know you know what's gonna happen. I can tell you right now that, um, you know, I say, same thing here. I want if ever it's you know I want people to 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 leap out and to go out on their own. And I can see what's gonna happen is if they go out on their own, they're probably gonna be like, hey, actually, um, I got this deal. Can I wholesale it? To, can, exactly. Can, can I be, can I can I use y'all as my 100%. best buyer? Um, and can I wholesale this deal to y'all or, um, or maybe they're they're they switch in there. Even some people that are buying rentals like. Um, you know, we, we're looking to buy more rentals. We're buying more rentals. We're selling some, and sometimes we can't buy it. We don't want to buy any more rentals, and we need to flip one or we need to wholesale one. Yeah. Um, we just wholesaled a deal to Keith um, and Humble, like you know, a couple weeks ago. That we were like, oh, we're gonna buy, and they were like, oh, no, we're gonna we'll wholesale it as well. Yeah, man. And stuff. Yep. Real estate's so big too. I mean, there's you know. A mindset of, of abundance and, and you know inclusion of everything I mean there's plenty to go around for everybody um, for sure. and, and you know we want to help as many people 100%. on that path or on that on that plan as, as we can yeah we, we kind of we look at our company as really like a, a vehicle for everybody that's involved with it to achieve their goals and so it's not just like a, our company and you work for our company it's no you're working with us and we're, we all have goals personal goals that we're trying to achieve and how can we use this vehicle that we've created to help us all achieve our personal goals? I love it. I love it. I, you, you know, there's some people, there's some people you meet in real estate and they're not, they're not as giving. So I want to thank y'all for even just giving me, y'all are some of the people that have given me an, an incredible amount of relationships and resources. I mean, even just, I talked about Ethan and Matt, you know, <laughs> multiple, y'all have given me multiple resources and not, not everyone is open with um, their teammates, their friends, their resources, and I really appreciate that. We appreciate Thank you too, you. man. Like we were saying, we got started the same time <laughs> together, man. We, I think we've uh, grown up in this industry kind of together. 
So we appreciate all that. We appreciate you inviting us on. We, of course. Yeah, of man. Course. We're, we're excited to see you uh, taking off and doing the things that you're doing with Flip Texas and everything like that. So that's awesome. Man. Yep. Want to give back. Um, you know, always looking for where are the places that you enjoy to add the most, add the most value to others. For sure. And everything like that. Speaking of just a quick shout out here, we do have a meetup coming up on the 7th of next month for Flip Texas. Um, it's going to be at a great location in the Heights. We are back, baby, 2022. It's going to be our biggest meetup yet, the 7th of next month. I'll put all the, um, all the links in the bio soon and everything like that. Um, do you all have any? I think I was going to ask you all a question about what do you any advice for someone buying their um say someone buying their first rental property maybe mm -hmm. and how do you even you know advice on buying their first rental property but how do you think about each rental property because some people get they get frust some people get frustrated like even you know me and my partner at, at first or everybody at some point gets a little frustrated they're like man this rental is just not you know where's the money at they're not you know they're yeah, not making enough sure. money um how do y'all think about it and any advice for someone's first couple rentals? I mean, you've got to be very analytical and you've got to know numbers um, on what you're buying and how you're investing. I mean, rental properties is an investment and you've got to treat it as such. You can, sure. you can allocate those dollars to other asset classes or spend those on marketing and get a return otherwise. So in, in rental properties, your return is um, a much longer horizon. And so you have to kind of understand that, knowing that going into it, and and be very patient. Um, Good. And, and patience is 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 the is the key to to rental properties. Hundred percent. I love it. Okay, patience, long term. So you're thinking of it, 10, 20, 30 years later. Absolutely. Yeah, man. It's. This isn't a real estate is not a get rich quick. Game. Oh man, <laughs> dude, I, I, I thought I thought it was. <laughs> I'm playing. Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah, it's a it's a long term game. Yeah, but if anybody has any questions about how to analyze a rental or you know what is what's the right type of cash flow to look like or what the right type of asset am I going to buy a three two or a four one or you know whatever that mix looks like, um, we're always happy to to talk to people For or sure. look at deals with people. Um, different areas of Houston. Houston's a massive, massive area. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of different nooks and crannies and, and uh, sub markets. So many sub markets in Houston. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's overwhelming. I was doing a, um, I did a presentation for Real Estate IQ um, nice. a, a week or two ago, and I did a really, and I'm, I'm sure you're pretty, you're pretty analytical, right? I did a really, <laughs> <laughs> I did a really in depth uh, research on count on essentially counties and like areas that are that are growing really fast um and it was it was just, it was very interesting i i was i was very surprised you know um i actually found out i, I kind of i told everybody i gave away the farm i told everybody that it's Ch that chambers county is if y'all can get any rentals in chambers county you have to i mean it's over like towards dayton or chambers county like it's basically it encompasses mount bellevue okay um, in that area, the population growth is over over three percent in the last twelve months. Um, it's it's really blown up out there. Montgo Montgomery County yeah. is, is really um, Montgomery County is really growing strong for sure. Um, but incredible, incredible. I'm trying to think if we have any any other any other things you want to share with the listeners. And we're in the best place to reach y'all out as well. For sure. Um, I mean, Facebook, Instagram, it's always a good thing to uh, to reach out to us on if you want to catch us there. Easiest way, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, only follow JR on, on Instagram. I'm just Jovage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you think in terms of, you know, leaving, leaving forward in 2022? Mm -hmm. Do y'all have things that y'all are uh, working on, adapting with, or, or kind of changing and looking forward to in 22 in terms of real, the real estate business, your real estate company? Yeah, absolutely. You want to take that one? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I believe in, in having goals, announcing your goals and, and sharing goals. I mean, one of our goals for this year is we want to be involved in uh, mobile home parks. Um, so that's something that we're starting to look at, um, starting to learn how to analyze those. And, and that's definitely on our horizon for this year for, for acquiring them as well as to JPing on some of those. For sure. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Y'all told you, you told me that now I remember. Yeah. And you gotta, um, you gotta, 
speak it to even let people you have to let yeah. people know like hey i'm interested if they can we you know bring a deal we, we are gonna buy a mobile home park in 2022 for sure okay yeah i love Absolutely. it anywhere for for people out there that are that are listening to this could this be in louisiana could this be in texas yeah i mean we're i mean preferably in texas is where we're looking at um it doesn't have to be in the houston area but yeah preferably in texas yeah we like texas laws <laughs> yeah yeah i like them as well okay well i love it how are um so buying buying, buying mobile home parks buying mobile home parks while still while still kind of doing the doing the single family yeah we're still going to continue we're still going to buy single family houses um and continue to grow that we've got a machine built out now that buys houses um and so growing that machine too right so we want to add more people to our team do more deals we, we really our, our goal is to you know, we're, we're, we're bouncing between eight to 10 closings a month right now. And so our goal is to really get over to, I mean, we would like to double that. So wow. can we do that all in 2022? Hopefully. I mean, that's what we're shooting for. So do you see eight, say eight to 10 deals mm -hmm. in the greater Houston area right now? I'm, the, yeah. I'm assuming like within an hour radius, hour, hour and a half, probably. Yeah, 100 miles. Of, I'd say Houston. within 100 miles. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you are doing some farther our deals too what um to do those 16 uh to add the to double that deal size yep do you think you can um do that here and just in the houston market Cause there's other people that are like oh ben i'm buying and i'm marketing all across the us and and, and everything <laughs> like that that's okay i think i think everybody yeah. has like their own they know their own truth and they have their own truth right and yeah. their truth is whatever they want it to be I look at as look at it as there's so much here in Houston that you should we want to go deeper before we go out, and so we're we're going to do that here in Houston. Yeah, I mean that's so, that's so true. I mean there are so many marketing channels for real estate to find leads. You can do. You always kind of get bogged down with shiny object syndrome, right? Oh, should I be doing bandit signs? Should I be doing mailers? Should I get cold callers? Should I do you know, PPC, whatever that is, there, there's no wrong answer. Yeah. Um, there really isn't. But I think the number, I don't know the exact number, but I think there's something around like 3,500 transactions a month or something that's like yeah. off market. Off market. No, I think it's more than that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's in like an insane number. In the Houston area. In the Houston area. So if you just look at market size, I mean, 1% of that is, is not even a drop in the bucket. There's um, no reason why I couldn't be doing a couple hundred deals a, a year. Yeah, yeah. so Houston. it's really about, it's about choosing what works for you, what you understand, what you're committed to, and then focusing on that and yeah. executing, executing well. Yeah, you can't do 200 deals a year if you're focused on all these. In Houston, if you're focused on all these other shows. For shiny, sure. The, the, the people that are telling you to go do the, what is it, the buy my Amazon store. That's yeah, that. for sure. Yeah. You, you gotta Houston, stay California. focused. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's the other thing, like he just mentioned, you have to, to be able to do that many kind of deals, you can't be pigeonholed into one kind of marketing um, type either. Like a lot of, you see a lot of people in this business yeah, who go, that. yeah, you, you see a lot of people in this business and they'll, they'll only be texters or they'll only be cold callers or they'll only do bandit signs or they'll only yep. do PPC or SEO or that kind of stuff. It's good to start off with one of those and mm -hmm. really master it before you move on to another one mm -hmm. um, and master your lead flow process of how you, you manage your leads when they come in from that marketing channel. Yeah. But you've got to be able to have multiple marketing channels to be able to grow how many deals you're doing a month. So okay. like like us, for instance, we, I can speak about us. Um, we really, really focused on cold calling. That we really focused on cold calling from the very beginning. Like you were saying, you came over one. You're, to tra my, you're training the VAs. Yeah, That's training what, the VAs. Yeah, yeah. You're, you came over to the house two years ago, and it's tough. It's tough it, to train them. Yeah. It's tough, man. But I'll tell you, I've got the same VAs that I had back then. Really? And I don't okay. call them VAs. They're they're our, they're part of our team. Um, and so you you train people really well, and you focus on your people, like we did with that, and it's paid dividends. Like that's cold calling is still our most consistent form of marketing. We we still get the we did more deals last year through cold calling than we did anything else really most of our rental acquisitions come from cold call leads it's it's wild man it's wild um but then we we got good at that so we wanted to add things so we, we added tv we went out and added uh ppc um 
We used to do a bunch of banded signs back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. If anybody from the city of Houston's we've watching, never we've never done signs. Signs <laughs> We did as well. Like, that got a little, we, we found that got a little less effective. A little um, less, it got a lot less effective. <laughs> it didn't work anymore. That's a, really good, that's a really good point, though. Just that cold calling, yep. you're, you're killing it. I think does have a certain level where you probably max out at. Yep. Uh, it's definitely, you know, it's it's a lot of deals, right? It's a lot of deals, but there probably is some point where I guess you've already called everyone, you know, and and, and multiple times and every week's different. They could you call them one week, they say one thing, call For them the sure. next week, they're like, "Oh, I'm ready." Or one one, um, one of your cold caller team members calls them and then the very next day the another team member and they just they just click differently yeah like, literally it's happened a bunch of times i'm sure i'm sure that um and i'm curious have y'all had a lead where you give it to one acquisitions person they don't close the deal and you literally give it to another acquisitions person boom they're um yeah the actually, actually it's happened a whole bunch <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's we we also work as a lot as a team so um yeah we've done we've done multiple offers to people from different team members things like that um, that kind of stuff really helps out when you're when you're purchasing houses. So, um, but yeah, when, I think the other thing when it comes to your marketing is a lot of people look at it and go, oh, well, I'm only getting two deals a month from cold calling or three deals a month from cold calling, and I've got four callers call in and that kind of thing. Well, you got to look at your processes of what you're doing with it. How are you managing those leads? Once they come in, are they just going into your CRM and nobody's following up with them after that, or What's your follow-up system like? Um, building out a system or a conveyor belt to where you're consistently going back and hitting those leads, mm -hmm. um, man, it's a that's where you find all those deals. I can't tell you. So when we started building our team, um, we had they require a lot of they require in my experience. Uh, we've had some struggles with cold calling in the last twelve months. In the last six months, in the last six months, we had some more struggles with cold calling. But I find that those leads are a lot more TLC. Than, than like a SEO, PPC, um, even like a, most other channels. Do yep. y'all find you're having to like, your acquisitions people are just having to follow up a million times and it's just taking, and it takes a little more leads maybe than other channels and any advice on? Yes, just, it's, go ahead. it's, it's the pull versus the push, yeah. right? I mean, anytime you can spend marketing dollars to get inbound leads, if someone's contacting you because they need the your help or they need the value that you're offering, that's gonna be an easier conversion. Wait. Anytime you're reaching out to someone to try to convince them to do something, it's gonna take a lot more effort. Yep, 100%, I couldn't have said it better. You, If you don't have, let, let's say you start off with cold calling because it's really, or texting, it's really easy, it's really cheap marketing. Those are great ways to start doing um, marketing in this for in this business but you've got to add some kind of um, outbound marketing where you're, where you're pulling in, leads in, in, in addition, yeah, to where you're pulling leads in from where people are raising their hands saying, I need to sell and I need to sell today. Cause those are always going to be quicker conversions. Cool. And so, his point earlier, until you, until you know what marketing channel you've mastered or mastered the process of the follow up and stuff or whatnot, it, it doesn't do you any good to go to another marketing channel to add more leads. Um, there's nothing more precious than a dollar invested on marketing and you have to see the returns on those dollars before you start going exploring other things for sure yeah so what's what's helped us out a lot in our business lately um, was adding a follow-up specials or lead manager um, man that's really been a game changer for us it's a big game changer have they um, and so I'm assuming what they're doing is they're they're knocking out a ton of a ton of calls warming them back up and then passing them over to your acquisitions guy That's exactly i'm it. curious are you ever doing any live transfers on like the hotter ones too or we haven't not, done that exactly you, maybe maybe you don't have to um i'm sure there's you could get better results if you did um the problem is is our acquisition managers are usually on the phone busy yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> or out an appointment i like the idea of the live transfer but i'm like well what if we're like working on something else or at an appointment? <laughs> Literally. So what we try to do is we try to just set the appointment. So the the um, lead manager or follow-up specialist is trained well enough to understand pain and if it's going to be a deal or not. This is a good question. So y'all are get so this is a great great topic that people want to argue about all day. Okay. So the top the topic and the, the argument is 
offers over the phone or uh, or oh, okay. or or you're saying lead comes in we set the appointment boom we're going we're, we're driving out to their house right away do i answer this yeah yes yeah, this, <laughs> this is my world so i this is houston where you can drive all day long and only run two appointments right you could run yep. you can have one it in, may be three if you're, maybe you're getting home at 8 30 you know you're, yeah exactly your lady's getting mad at you exactly you're, you're working 14 hour days and you yep. have three appointments so you could have one in, in Galveston and then you could have one in <laughs> Conroe and that's, you know, four hours of commuting between the two, right? Um, not one way, but both ways. Anyway, so what we do is we, in our sales process, we use ranges with people. Um, so we'll, we'll range them and we don't use, we don't give them our range. We give them other investors ranges. Oh, y'all, I hope y'all are listening right now to these golden nuggets. So you're saying something like, Okay, it looks like other investors are paying between seventy to ninety thousand for yep. properties in the area, depending on the condition. Yep. Does it sound like we should go out to your place and see what the best we can do is, or, or probably not? See, th- are you saying something like that? I think that's even too long, man. So uh, wow. I would just we we would we would say something to the effect of, "Hey, it looks like investors in the area are paying between seventy and ninety, and then you just shut up and you let them react." Because you want them to react. And that's not even your offer. That you're just no. educating them on the neighborhood. Yeah, you just want them to react. So we give them a low offer too. And the reason you give them a low offer is because you want a reaction from them. And so when they re- when they react... We find out who's motivated and who's not. Well, yeah. So. Well, they'll say, oh, oh my God, that's way too low. I would never <laughs> sell my house for that. I would at least have to get $100,000 out of it. And you're like... Boom, I have something to work with. Okay, well, that's not my offer. That's just what other investors are paying. So you, what you're saying is, is if you could get $100,000, you would sell your house. Yeah, I'd sell my house at $100,000. Okay, well, let's, go on a, let's schedule an appointment. Schedule an appointment. Yeah. That's how you get good appointments. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you know, but so you're going on appointments and you've given them a range. So you know these people are already, they're already like, they have to be somewhat motivated to be still accepting you to come to their house after you've said other investors are paying these. Yeah. I would, I would, I would say, huh? Yeah, for sure. Cool. That's, that's how you find out the motivation. And so our, our lead manager, um, he's giving ranges sometimes, um, but mostly our acquisition guys are the ones giving the ranges to figure out if it's a, a good deal or not. I love it. I love it. Well, yeah. we got some great acquisitions tips. We got some rental tips. We got it. We got we got everything. Did y'all give? Um, y'all, I know y'all gave. Um, best place to find y'all on Instagram. Anything else y'all want to share before we hop off? Um, you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, honestly, reach out to us. Uh, Instagram or Facebook, Andrew Job. My handle on Instagram is at Jobage, just my last name, A G E Jobage. Uh, we'd love to share. Um, whether it's dispo acquisitions, managing tenants, managing rentals, managing rehabs, um, we've seen a lot of stuff and, and are happy to share those experiences. For sure. Um, also, put a little plug in, and yeah. you guys, you're obviously invited. But um, on March 24th, we're gonna do um, just kind of, not even an event per se, but just a meet and greet, a hangout, um, beers, and, and Chick Fil A and stuff at our office, yeah. um, just to kind of have some hospitality and some networking. Nothing like Chick Fil A and beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. Okay, well that sounds super cool. For sure. So um, the other thing I'd say is if, if you're if you're contemplating of uh, getting into this business or wholesaling or how you're wondering how to be a better wholesaler or, or something to that extent, go work with a shop that knows what they're doing. Go take a job working somewhere and learn from them. Um, you're gonna not only get paid, but you're gonna get paid to learn. And so I, I think that's the best way to, to really gain skills and knowledge is to go in this business, is go work for somebody that's doing it well. That way you can just kind of skip the the line, of the knowledge line, right? And just get right to the front. Yeah, the, in some cases the twenty, thirty thousand dollar $30,000 guru package. Uh-huh. Yeah, or, or the mistakes. We, or yeah, or yeah. the mistake. <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we didn't necessarily um, go buy the packages or the, the coaching packages up like I, I wish we probably would have in some cases because we made a lot of mistakes along the way. Um, but man, the, the easiest way to, if you don't have $30,000 to go buy, pay a guru, just go work for somebody that's doing it. Absolutely. Okay, love it. Well, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for hopping on. Let's, let's see real quick if we have, if we can see any questions we got here. Uh, well, we'll need Chris Hopper's on Angel Hunter. My guys, what's up? 
Any recom okay, Blaine Lynn, great guy here. Any recommendations on where I can hire cold callers? Yeah, that's, that a, is. that's a that's a really good question. So the question was, is there any recommendations where you can hire cold callers? Um, you know, Facebook is really good. There's a lot of groups on Facebook for hiring people uh, in the Philippines. So if you want to hire like people really? overseas in the Philippines to do your cold calling, that's where we found all of our guys in the Philippines and gals. Um, if you're going through and doing um, like, let's say Latin America, um, we use Craigslist. It's great. Hmm. Craigslist is a great place to, to find all your callers. And there, there's some services out there. Um, that provide really good cold callers as well. I don't know. I've never used them, but I, I hear good things about different ones. I've heard. I've heard. I've heard mixed reviews. It, yeah, I've heard mixed reviews. It's it's tough when you're, you know, it's you're pay, you're already paying an upcharge. You're, well, it's just a tough. It's a tough business. So I've heard mixed reviews. There's some good companies out there, though. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. The the main thing with with whether you're looking to hire cold callers or anybody. I mean. Even though they're overseas or not in your office or anything, they are still a team member. They're 100%. still a person. And so you have to understand that you have to invest in them. You can't say, I need a cold caller, get on the phone, start cold callings and expect results. It's an investment in people. And that'll always be the case regardless of where they're located. Time. Right. Unfortunately, you gotta spend time with them, right? So um, there are people, they like to have attention. You have to give them attention and make them feel like they're part of the team. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Well, appreciate it, guys. I'm half um, cut off. Right <laughs> you didn't tell me like I'm cutting half of this thing. We will see y'all later. Last shout out. Um, we do have that Flip Texas, uh, our large our large meetup coming on the 7th of next month. I'm sure Aldridge will will uh, give us all kinds of details and things like that on it. I believe we're going to be at your your uh, Eureka Heights in the in the Heights. And uh, we do have an agent workshop as well coming up. Definitely, if y'all have any deals, um, I'm definitely still buying. Feel free to DM me um, and send to my email. Talk to y'all later.